Hello IEMMA fans and welcome back to another great episode. I'm your host, Sam Yurook. And lucky for you, I am here with Daryl Montague, who fights for Millennia Gym in Rancho Cucamonga. Hi Daryl. Right, what's up guys? So I have a couple questions for you. How did you get started with Millennia and why? Why did you want to get started with Millennia? Uh, I started when I was in high school, um, you know, messing around like any other kid, had nothing to do. Signed up for wrestling and, you know, the wrestling class or team. I met Manny Tapia, who's King of the Cage world champion. He's fought uh, WEC, he's fought world titles, multiple world titles. And he was one of the coaches there, and he just kind of, we started messing around. We would wrestle with each other. We'd start, he'd start teaching me some submissions. And then my, my dad had met Batiste Mansuri. I think my dad was working. Batiste had come in to get some tile. And, you know, I went and tried out his gym, loved it, and I've been training with him ever since. So you started fairly new when the sport was actually pretty new. So can you give us a little inside look at how it was when that was going on? What were some hurdles and things like that you had to accomplish? Uh, nothing really. I mean, I was still young, so I wasn't fighting professionally yet. Um, it wasn't as cool now. Now they have a really, really awesome amateur system where when I was 14 years old, I could have been fighting. You know, people evenly matched up my age. When I was about 15, I started fighting, and any time I would fight, it would be an adult. Uh, I do a lot of try to do a lot of tournaments and stuff like that, uh, and then of, of course when I went to school, no one ever knew what MMA was. No one knew any of that stuff. I'd be talking about fights, and no one knew it. And then once the Ultimate Fighter happened, it was the hottest thing. Everybody was a cage fighter. Everyone knew what was going on, and I was just sitting there quietly, like, "Yeah, I've been doing this for a while. I know what you're talking about." <laughs> so it was it was kind of cool uh, being a kid and going and getting to sit in the back of the back of the show with like, a lot of guys getting ready for their fights. It gave me a lot of experience. I saw what it looked like, the emotions. I got to see what the mindset of a person going and getting ready to fight. So I think I have an advantage on most people where I wasn't just blindly going into this sport. I've been around it since I was a kid. So I knew what kind of mental preparations and what kind of nerves go on in the back before the fight, which I don't think most people get the, get the chance to even experience that, let alone you know, be right there, part of it. So over 10 years, you've worked with a ton of different promoters and really gotten an experience and a feel for them. Now, you know, there could be great promoters and not so great promoters. Give us a look from that aspect of it. How is it working like that and what are the pressures under that? Uh, I don't think, you know, there's such thing as a good promoter or a bad promoter. They're all promoters. It's a business. They're looking to make money. I'm looking to make money. So what I'm really looking for into a promoter is giving me an even matchup for the amount of money it's worth. I mean. I don't want to go and fight a number two ranked guy in the world for, you know, peanuts and then vice versa. If they're going to pay me the right, they're going to pay me peanuts, I want to fight, you know, someone who's worth peanuts. Uh, all promoters, they try to be pretty fair, you know, fighters, they have their thing and it's a lot of fighters, on the other hand, don't want to fight tough fights. So sometimes it's not always the promoter's fault that the, you know, matchups aren't that great. Uh, I've worked with some promoters that were you know, really up front and wanted to get everything in paper and make sure everything was, all the, dot, the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed, but the other promoters just kind of do it with the handshake and you never know what you're going to get with them. Sometimes you can go to the fight thinking you're going to get paid one thing and then all of a sudden the fight ends and it ain't what you thought you were going to get. So you can't really get too mad about it. You just got to build yourself up and learn from your mistakes and try to get, from, get with a promoter who's going to treat you well. Okay, so what goes into your training regimen before a fight or when you're preparing for one? What do you do that you find is most successful? Well, and every day I train at least, you know, two to three hours, get a lot of technique. The difference between a regular day and the days that I'm getting ready for a fight is cardio. I'm going to do a lot more cardio. I'm going to be pushing my cardiovascular up as high as I possibly can and also my diet, you know. I can't just be eating junk food or eating once a day. You have to get the right amount of foods in you to be able to train to the level that you need to. But yet at the same time, you can't take in so much stuff where you're bloating yourself and you can't get down to the weight that you have to fight at. So it's, it's just like a science project. Almost every fight I do it differently, try to figure out what's work. Uh, I'll get back to you guys when I have the perfect formula, but for now, that's all I got. Well, if part of the formula is not eating junk food, you can count me out right now. <laughs> not doing it. Can't make me. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, 10 years is a long time to fight. You have to have had some amazing accomplishments, and we want to know a little bit more about that. Uh, I've won a couple titles. I've won a couple awards. Uh, if you guys are familiar with SureDog, the, the website, in 2009, I, I got uh, All Violence Team, 
the HDNet, I got a Blood Bath of the Year runner-up. Uh, some of the titles I won, I had a Gladiator Challenge 125 belt, uh, world title, and then also the Tachi Palace 125 world title. Other than that, to be continued. So what would be advice that you have to give to up-and-coming fighters that are looking to follow in your footsteps? Uh, work your hardest, try to become the best. Uh, if you're not trying to be the best, why are you doing it? Also do it for the love, don't try to do it for attention and money because those things might come, they might not. So if you want to be happy, you got to be able to you know, do just, just for the love of the sport and of course competition, try to be the best. So it's the only advice I have. Thank you so much, Daryl. And that's going to wrap it up here with us at IE MMA with Daryl Montague.